I just got into recovery. Now I got to deal with all my family members. So what is it like dealing with family members in early recovery? I can only speak from my previous experiences, so I hope that I learn how to turn my volume on my phone off. Dealing with family members in early recovery. So I remember I did 69 days in jail. I got out and I tried to go back to the family that I lied, cheated, stole, manipulated for my own personal gains. So basically for me personally, I had to build back trust. Where I come from, trust is something that is not freely given. Trust is something that is earned. So I had to earn the trust of my loved ones. But how does a loved one love somebody or trust somebody that just came back from doing all these things? Uh, I'm sick. Let me get $20. Oh, let me do whatever I had to do in order to acquire the drugs that I was addicted to at the time. So early recovery, right? It's so challenging. I challenge you to go and work some type of program of recovery. Are there people successful? that work no program of recovery, they're very few and far between, but they do exist. So my family members had major trust issues. Adam, you did all this stuff, you haven't changed. So I actually had to prove that I had changed. It didn't come quick, it actually came slow. So here's some of the things that I had to do. I had to religiously and be purposeful in my intent in attending 12-step recovery meetings because that's the only thing that they had at the time in East Fort Myers, Florida, where I was born and raised and located at that point in time in the game. But the biggest thing is the family members deal with a lot of pain and hurt, just like we do in recovery, right? We're so full of shame and guilt. Like, I can't believe I did this to myself. I can't believe I ended up in jail on a heroin charge in March of 2016 in Southwest Florida. So I get out and some of the family members understood and then some of the family members didn't. Did I heal absolutely every single relationship within my family members after becoming sober almost seven years ago? I did not. But it's all dependent on your outcome, right? So the way that you view it, they have to see the change in you. And I'm not talking about the Adam just got out of jail and uh, lost a bunch of weight or put a, a bunch of weight on. It's not just that Adam's going to church on Sunday. It's not just that Adam paid me back the $50 when he seen me in the grocery store because I had robbed my cousin and I just so had to see my cousin and I had to make it right. Right? Your family are sometimes the people that love you the most but actually trust you the least. For my circumstance, could you blame them? I did every single thing in my power to manipulate my way into more money so that I can go buy some drugs, preferably at that time, crack or heroin or both. So trust is built back slowly. It's almost like muscle when you're in the gym. The first day you walk in there, you will not be strong. You actually will be weak. You will get tested in the places that you are weak in first, right? So I was weak with my relationship with a specific family member. It took a lot of time in order for that family member to even come back around and want to have a conversation with me. You know, there's still family members out there currently that I haven't been able to restore the relationship. I, I had to deal with some of my family members in early recovery, understanding that they might just think that Adam is the old Adam for the rest of his life. Does that determine your success? Does that determine your well-being? Does that determine your future? It doesn't. It hurts me and pains me that my Uncle Dwayne thinks that I'm just like my dad, right? Because my dad's the black sheep of the family. He really didn't deal with a bunch of his family members in his early recovery, which I hope he's still fighting his battle because currently me and my father are not on speaking terms. Sometimes they got a lot of resentments towards you and vice versa, right? I had a resentment for my dad 
I had a resentment for my biological mother, leaving me at a Salvation Army in Lakeland, Florida as a toddler at two years old. You have to pick and choose. But sometimes that stuff gets so overwhelming, right? I got to deal with all this stuff. I got to deal with all my raw emotions because now I'm sober and I'm not masking it with narcotics. I have to deal with the, the condition of my body, my mind, my soul, my spirit, which has been ultimately diminished before I got into recovery for addiction. Be faithful in your pursuit. Have faith. Have faith that if I keep doing the next right thing, if I keep taking one step forward, if I keep making a good decision, if I keep drinking a bottle of water instead of a bottle of soda and a donut, I might just maybe feel better. They might just maybe accept me. But don't let other people's attitudes determine your altitude, right? Not everybody wants to see you succeed. A lot of people love you and care about you, but they're mad at you because of the way you did yourself, the way that you did things. They, they just wanted to love you into rehab and you weren't ready. But now you are because you're in early recovery. So I challenge you to go out there, hit a couple meetings. You know something that really worked for me? And it might not work for you. Walking there, walk in there and authentically apologize for all the horrible stuff that you did. I had to apologize to my mom for taking her pistol from underneath her bed and selling it to the connect for some bags. I had to apologize to this person for selling them some fake blues when I knew they was fake so that I could go out, take that money and acquire the new blues, the real ones. Dealing with family and early recovery can be a major challenge. Don't let it become a major setback for you. Not everybody will see your vision. Not everybody thinks that you can do it. Not everybody says that, go Adam, go. Go, Adam, go. Not everybody's going to be in your corner cheering for you. If I can give you any words of encouragement, any words of wisdom from my own journey since March 16th to now, cheer for yourself in those dark times. Go out there and do the best thing that you know how to do. Hit a meeting, get a sponsor, work a program, find smart recovery, start praying more. Whatever, you, whatever you're into, I want you to do more of it. Whatever works for you, I want you to do more of it. And if you find yourself failing miserably in a certain aspect or you just don't get it right, maybe take a step back, collect yourself, and take another step forward into the pursuit of your dreams, your goals. Some families will embrace you the second you get out, and some families won't want nothing to do with you when you get out. It's up to you. <clears throat> Walk your own path, achieve, dream big, and just don't ever stop. Thank you so much for being here. We're gonna be pumping out many more videos like this here in the beginning of 2023. If we can do anything for you, if you got any subjects you want to hear about, we got a bunch more coming. We got going to holiday parties with alcohol. We're going to talk about harm reduction and what is Cali sober, right? MAT. We also got uh, what is Spravado. You know, some people are actually using, um, I believe it's like a ketamine meets a tranquilizer. It's some type of LSD thing. We're going to have more information on it soon as we um, get that person in, in front of camera. And then just a whole bunch of different stuff too. We're going to talk about what is the difference when it comes to Cali Sober using THCO versus HHC. What? More, that, more stuff like that to come. Delta 8, Delta 9, Delta 10, Delta 6A. All this different stuff in the cannabinoid family. We're not saying what is right. We're not saying what is wrong. Your recovery is yours. How you choose to recover is yours. And we're going to clap for you no matter what. Thank you so much for being here. <coughs> and we're going to clap for you no matter what, because how you choose to recover is up to you. We support you in any method, any format, any anything, because who are we to judge? Me or my wife, Jamie Tall, will never judge you for trying to get yourself better. I think there's a famous saying in, in an amazing book I'm reading. Let's stop pointing out the specks in others' eyes. 
when we're sitting here with a log in our eye. Thanks so much. If you want to hear about anything, get in the comments, and we appreciate the heck out of you. We'll see you real soon.